Although Arizona has built up a reputation as an incredible place to retire, it doesn't come without its downsides. Like any other state, there are pros and cons to living in Arizona, and if you're trying to figure out, is Arizona a good place to retire? Stay tuned for these Arizona pros and cons to decide if it's the right choice for you. Let's get started with pro number one. And when most people think about the pros of living in Arizona, the first thing that comes to mind is 330 boasting sunny days. That's right, 330 days of sunshine. It's easy to see why this tends to be the driving factor. The temperate weather makes it easy to get outside regularly, and you can take a stroll around one of the many picturesque parks, like the Desert Botanical Garden, or all the little parks that are within all of the towns and the cities here. You also have the natural spaces like the Grand Canyon, for instance. So there's just a lot to offer here in terms of landscaping and beauty. So let's proceed to pro number two, and that's none other than golf and outdoor activities. Many people retire in Arizona for golf alone. With so many incredible courses throughout the state, it's easy to get out on the green any time of the year. After all, rainy days rarely ruin a good golf game in Arizona. There's also a lower humidity here. I'm sure you've heard it's a dry heat, so you're not out there sweating it out on the golf course. You're just kind of melting. Just bring an umbrella, you'll be fine. Moving on to the third pro, the food scene and the fine arts in Arizona. You wouldn't have known it, but Arizona is home to some of the best Mexican food in the country. And while this is certainly true, that's not all the local food scene has to offer. There are also several James Beard award-nominated chefs throughout the entire state. Apparently they like it here. And they feature all different types of cuisines. And it also features a flourishing fine arts scene. You can visit one of the many museums throughout the state or even catch a performance by the Phoenix Symphony. You can also attend one of the many ballet performances by Ballet Arizona and even the Arizona Opera. You can even enjoy a nice play at the Phoenix Theater. So pro number four is sports teams. If you prefer sports over ballet, don't worry. Arizona's home to obviously a few different major league sports teams. And spring training season for baseball also brings in a ton of teams from across the country. And in case you're not familiar with who's here, well, that includes the Cubs, the White Sox, the Reds, the Indians, the the Los Angeles Dodgers, Angels, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Milwaukee Brewers, Oakland Athletics, San Diego Padres, Seattle Mariners, and the San Francisco Giants, and the Texas Rangers. So coming up with pro number five is the cost of living here. So the cost of living is definitely a huge issue to consider when you're looking at the pros and cons of living anywhere, specifically even in Arizona. So it's generally more affordable than other popular states popular with retirement, such as Florida or California. It's got moderate housing prices, although they have been going up, but it does have low transportation costs, affordable food prices, and the overall cost of retirement living, especially in one of the 55 plus Arizona communities, is very reasonable. Taxes here are another benefit that Arizona offers. Property tax in Arizona is typically lower than the national average, which is hugely beneficial for buying a retirement home and being on a fixed income. Arizona also does not tax Social Security retirement benefits, and since 2006, Arizona's had no inheritance tax. Now these tax benefits can add up to some serious savings over time. Now moving on to the cons of retiring here in Arizona, and I'd say the number one con, and I think everybody can relate to this, and this is what they think of, is that summers are hot and brutal. All that sunshine in the winter months, however, makes up for a very hot summer, and the dry desert climate is not gonna be for everyone. You should also consider the summer storms and the desert critters that call this space home. So June, July, and August are definitely the hottest months in the desert and can be tough for some people to handle. It's obviously gonna be a little difficult to get out for a round of golf when it's 110 and the flagpole burns your hand. So one thing to keep in mind is it's said that arthritis is cured in two places of the world. One of them's gonna be the Middle East and the other one is Arizona. So pick the spot that's right for you. Con number two, because of this desert climate, if you're a fan of ocean views or large oak trees, you might be disappointed by Arizona's cacti and ton of Palo Verde trees. The desert landscape is very different from what you see in other parts of the U.S. And if you enjoy gardening, you might just have to adjust what you plant so that it survives in this desert soil. Arizona is obviously really dry and requires you and your plants to drink a lot of water to stay hydrated. On the plus side, if you're an experienced traveler, you can just cruise north for about an hour, hour and a half, and there you'll see some coniferous trees. 
Rocky Point, Mexico has an awesome resort style beach experience and that's only about three hours away. Now the third con would be haboobs and monsoons. If you've never experienced these summer storms, they can be a bit scary. A haboob is a giant dust storm that just looks like a wall of dust sweeping over an area. Although they don't last very long, they can make quite an impact and you'll want to be inside when they hit. The summer monsoon storms begin in June and last through August or September. And these are just short, brief storms with thunder, lightning, and occasional flash flooding. The locals are pretty used to these weather outbursts and even tend to enjoy them for a quick relief from the summer heat. But they sure can catch a visitor or a newcomer off guard. But hey, I'll be honest, it's better than a hurricane ravaging through your home at 150 miles an hour. Now moving on to con number four, Unfortunately, there are some pests that love the dry desert climate, such as cockroaches and scorpion, which are pretty common critters found here in Arizona. But don't worry, they're not like the Chicago cockroaches that show up when you don't clean or at some of the uh, less popular restaurants. Most homeowners hire a pest control service to come and spray the houses regularly to keep these unwanted visitors out. Con number five is driving. So the best way to get around Arizona is by car. There is pretty much no public transportation system. There's a little bit in some areas, but it's not always readily accessible or convenient. You're gonna need to get a car to visit the doctor or to attend different events, go downtown, things like that. But you can always call an Uber nowadays, right? Many of the retirement communities in Arizona are set up to have convenient stops like the grocery store or pharmacy as close as possible, but it will still require you to get over there with a vehicle or jump on a bicycle. Now that you've seen the pros and cons to retiring in Arizona, you'll have a better idea of what it's like to retire in the Valley of the Sun. And at this point, you may be wondering, well, hey, where's the best place to live in Arizona? There are so many different active adult communities throughout the state. It can be really tricky to select the one that's perfect for you. There are mobile homes with a land lease that costs under $50,000. There's some nice homes and communities like Leisure World and Mesa, which are priced around $300,000. Or there's some resort style homes in places like Incantera, which are $500,000 and over. I have another YouTube video on the five best 55 plus communities in Arizona, in my opinion, that you might find interesting too. You can view it here.